Well, it's that time of year, the weather's warming up, the fish are starting to bite, a great time to get out there and hone your skills. Ready for them bigger fish, isn't it, mate? Exactly, mate. Out testing a few things. Not just that, but it's just great to get out and get a bend in the rod as well, isn't it? It most definitely is. Oh, look at him, he's absolutely stunning. It's a pretty well, son. <laughs> Quality, what a star. First one of the day, that didn't take too long, mate, did it? Well, mate, absolute little corker there. Looks like you've been painting your fingers. I have been painting my fingers, but you know what? It was definitely worth it for what is a very, very stunning carp. And when they look like this, I really don't mind how big they are, to be honest. Absolute treasure, and I didn't actually think they looked like this in Brookhall. I've heard there's a few 20s in here as well these days. Yeah, there are. I mean, caps are really looking after it as a, as a lake, and it's a great place to come down for a bite. And I just think, you know, when you're catching carp like this, it really doesn't matter how big they are. And it's a great way of sort of getting a bend in the rod in the colder months. It's still freezing, isn't it? This is like a, a bar of ice in my hands. I'm really made up with it, you can tell, can't you? Well done, mate. Right, I know you've got some uh, good little tactics for us for sort of short session carping. Nice little tip, so we'll pop them back and uh, have a look at that and see why you've got these brightly coloured fingers. All right, mate. Well, mate, lovely start there. Always nice to get a bend in the rod. I believe you've got a couple of bits to show us. I have, yeah. I mean, I got you out um, because I'd, I'd sort of been talking to you on the phone for quite a few months now and saying that uh, there'd been this uh, secret, if you like, coming out of South Africa. Um, and, you know, to cut a long story short, um, it's this, what we call the, the goo liquid. These guys have been uh, using it to great effect in on the sort of bank fishing scene in South Africa. They've been going out um, they apply it to the outside of a method feeder, uh, to PVA bags, and, and the results are staggering. But more so um, when the English anglers started to see it in use. Now, the, the first that we sort of heard about it is when Ian Huntington, the, uh, the now England manager, the, the first experience he had was in 2008, I believe, in the South African World Cup. And he was next to a couple of anglers who he thought were, well, let's say, inferior to him, you know, yellow line, heavy line. And uh, they were out catching them like five to one. Really, that much? And and they were when they when they were looking on the surface, they could see this flash of green, and obviously it got them thinking. And these these got during that match. I mean, I think I think they caught twice the amount of what was in second place. They were getting bites, you know, within seconds and a, and a few minutes. Wow. And it was obvious to them that they had something up their sleeve. So accelerate four or five years. It is now sort of materialised that the South African guys wanted to distribute it into the into Europe, and Ian was trusted um, in bringing Kiana Carp, his company, and the goo. And you know, obviously, you know, Corda were very keen to get behind it and um, try to bring it to market. So that's it. You know, it's a it's a really simple thing to use. Anyone can use it, and and on lakes with a lot of fishing, it's just the perfect sort of complement to, to, to already good baits that are out there. The easiest way of using it is, um, like I say, I've got a stick mix in here and I've actually, let's take these out, in the, in the, in the stick mix I've actually used um, what, this one which is a thinner version of them uh, and it's the pineapple supreme, it's like a pineapple you'd never smell before. Very, very natural smelling, very clean, there's no chemically sort of edge to it um, and I've applied that to one of main lines well, a couple of mainline stick mixes actually. We've got in here the activated nut mix. That I mean, they're brilliant baits, you know, and the Cloud Nine stick mix. And all I've done is I've put a few sprays of this in it, uh, and a bit of the corn twist. I think you've got it in your hand. Yep. And just sort of turned it around and got it to sort of ingrain itself into that powder. So that's the first stage. So that's giving my ground bait a boost. Um, and then secondly, what what you'd actually do once you come to cast out, um, you take very delicate rig here this is you know this is what we're going to talk about sort of this time of year and with these size of carp and and it, it couldn't be simpler you just hook hook a bag on so I'd hook me bag on here so for all intents and purposes that'd be good enough it's got a bit in there but this is where this stuff comes into its own and you can you know be as picky as you want I take all six with us because there's going to be six launched you'll see now why it's called the goo did notice you put in a couple of different ones on earlier. Isn't yeah, it? I mean that's what the South. I mean that's how the South Africans stay ahead of the pack because in their country everybody uses this stuff. Like you take a lake of a few acres and every single angler all along is using it. But this is why it's called goo. Look, comes out like a gooey liquid, and basically what the impact this is going to have. Not only will it explode on the surface, giving you like a green flash, 
and that'll shoot down. And with that ground bait in there, you know, because it's called the activated nut mix, it, it will activate on the bottom and you'll get little bits shooting up and that takes that flavour trail with it. So you literally end up with a column of colour through yeah, the water? Yeah, the results are instant. You, know, you only need to go out there and use it and you'll see for yourself. If you fish one rod with this on it, like I did the first time, and one rod without, over a day, if you had a few bites, you, it will average out always in the favour of the goo. For, for sort of instant fishing, single look bait fishing, for fishing over bait, I've never in my time ever seen anything that can draw fish straight to the hook bait that quickly. Like I say, it's no secret, the, the love I've got for like a cell boiler or an activate boiler, and when I'm fishing, you know, for big carp, I'll be drawing them into that area with, with a top quality boilie to get them eating and munching, but then, you know, you've got to get them into that hook bait, otherwise it's needle in a haystack, which is why yellow baits work so well, why pink baits work so well. This is just taking it to another level, you know. You're actually creating an aura around your hook bait rather than just a colour that they can spot. They'd won one silver medal in 10 years until Loki, the basically the developer of this in South Africa, came into the team and they've won four straight gold medals since, Joe. In England too, isn't it? I mean, Yeah, you know. they, they came to our own patch on, at Linear Fisheries, right, playing us at our own game, fishing <laughs> zigs, and, and beat us. I mean, that's, you know, that's unheard of. What, what, in effect, was our, our best selected match team, you know, they, they tated us on our own patch, you know, it's crazy. Um, people can do, go up, down other tangents in carp fishing and come up with, with, with new items. I think you can tell how excited I am, can't you, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> Just a bit, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's definitely rubbing off on me. I'll, uh, I'll be giving it a go, and uh, well, I'm sure we'll be catching a few more on it today. Well, how about that for a bit of instant action? <laughs> <laughs> I told you it's good stuff, didn't I? Literally, just come up here, hit one rod, and the other one's gone. So Al's doing the honours there. Two completely different spots as well, mate. One was just in close and one up against some reeds on the far margin. Speechless, mate. <laughs> Look at that little short hook links, Joey. Kept that quiet. <laughs> Let's see, we'll give you we'll we'll go on the pretty awards, yeah? <laughs> like Britain's next sexy carp. I think mine's bigger. <laughs> like, I think I'm first. Go on, Jay. Oh, that's naughty, you got boiling. Yeah, my, mine's mine mine's definitely not that good looking. <laughs> I always tell people like when you know when they're fishing through the colder months and they sort of lose a bit of motivation and stuff. I always say just go to a lake where you're going to get bites, you know, and and sort of learn, you know, le learn about things that you're going to use in the year ahead. And without yeah. doubt, yeah. yeah. And it's it's getting your confidence in those things as well, isn't it? You know. Absolutely. Like I say, in our in our fishing, we've gone down a certain route, you know, rigs and and obviously different types of bait, which includes like a food substance yeah this is this is something totally unique it's tapping into the carp sort of natural instincts you know creating like a cloud and a smell and a lot of other bits around your hook bait that they've never seen before go on son Yay. here we go well that water temperature is still freezing cold but don't stop the old goo working mate no <laughs> absolutely not joey well it's your first little outing with it i've got a definite moving bar of ice <laughs> and uh, well how long do you reckon you're in the water for you put plop two rods out didn't you <sighs> No more than an hour, probably more like 40 minutes, I reckon. Yeah, and how did you apply it to your, to your sticks and that? Um, I'd put a little bit inside the actual bag, actually. Yeah, they but... recommend that, the old South Africans. Yeah. <laughs> that was me, Australian South African. <laughs> yeah, um, and then a little bit on the outside and a little bit on the hook bait. Uh... Magical. Like I say, the world is your oyster and it's only limited by your imagination, my son. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, right, my hands are absolutely freezing and I'm sure this fish is too. This one wants a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> one of the sort of most important elements to me when I come to lakes with small carp is to ensure they can get the whole lot in their mouth, you know. And if there's, if there's not a lot of nuisance fish, even when you're fishing for big carp, I think the smaller you can sort of fine tune the hook bait, the better. What's your thoughts on that? Any time of year, yeah, not just winter, but yeah, in the summer too. I think, I think basically, the smaller you make your hook bait, the harder it is for them to deal with. The smaller and lighter it is, yeah, no, I totally agree with you, mate. You know, it goes in there, it goes, it goes, goes in easier, doesn't it? Uh, you know, a large food food item, they can get it in. I mean, when that when it does finally nail them, you do get great hook holds and that. But I just, I don't think it's that natural. You know, when you get them grazing on big boilies, fantastic. You know, 
but it's a lot harder to get them started. Once they're started, you know, it is a great method. But I think when you're looking for a bite and you're just trying to nick nick something, you know, a little setup like we've got here, like, you know, I've really shown it on the bag, but it, it, I mean, look at that. That's just a little bit of our IB fake corn. Um, and that is buoyant then? Yeah, that's buoyant. So I've just got a little dropper shot there. And like I say, it just sort of holds it down like that. And, and and that's it, you know, they come in and suck it up and, and it's easy with and the and the sort of setup really I've just got some nine pound end gauge there. Yeah, that's, that's, the, nice that's and the, soft, isn't it? Yeah, that's the guru at link. It's not something I'd normally use, Joe, on like when I'm fishing for big carp. Um I'd use it on zigs, use it all the time, but um for sort of fishing on the deck I'd obviously step it up a little bit and because I'd want maybe my rig behaving differently. But for small carp you know, I always try to take a leaf out of the, the matchman's book. You've got equally small balls and on. And simple. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lovely and simple, just like me. Uh, yeah, fairly short hook link and a, a really small, uh, it's a CC more, uh, six mil pop-up, that is. Yeah, that is diddy, isn't it, mate? That yeah. is. But these carp, a lot of carp that you go to uh, on sort of commercial fisheries or, or small puzzles do have do have really small mouths, don't they? And especially these ones. I mean, this is an old match venue. You know, yeah. you tend to, with them old match venues, you know, they've been caught from a very small age, haven't they? Yeah, Young exactly. age, were very small when their mouths get ruined and they tend to... Yeah, exactly. Some of them... Up. Some of them are minters, and then other ones, yeah, have seen better days, haven't they? But as a result, when you're trying to catch them, you need to adjust your setup to suit. You know, you developed this awesome little rig, didn't you? And it couldn't be couldn't be any simpler. Just a sort of anti-tangle sleeve and a running lead. What what do you think of that when fishing for smaller carp? Or just you you just think it's good for everything? Again, mate, yeah, I, I just think it's, it's it's ideal for all sorts of situations. Um, one thing I've noticed since using that for so many years, religiously. Um, is that if I do go back to a lead clip, I find that my indication suffers immensely. Oh, you know? definitely. Especially in this sort of situation. I mean, today's a prime example. I did have two running leads on, you know, and I cast the first one into the reeds, um, messing about, I thought, oh, you know, I want to be quick here. So I've just put a lead clip on, you know, a hybrid lead clip on, fishing against some reeds there, and I've had one bite that I didn't even know I had on because it's come back towards me. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? And, and if I had get... that same setup on and it had come back towards me, it would have pulled through there and I still would have got yeah, indication. The... Yeah, especially with like the fluorocarbon as well. It's dug down and you've sort of got a, a sort of permanent bit of tension in it as well haven't you so that really does it adds to it it's a great setup mate it's caught you carp from everywhere hasn't it yeah i mean it's not just that indication thing it's the you know it gets the resistance of of the lead um, and then that pops out of there and it can't use the lead to shake the hook out or anything like that you know it yeah shakes its head slides down and off it swims right should we crack on with the old fishy mate i need to get a need to get a rod bit tight them reeds i reckon yeah i would mate it's back to me the cup tea as well yeah <laughs> I had a quick bite on the reed beds to my left hand side, but then it slowed down very quickly. So I think I might have spooked a few fish out of the area or sort of pushed them back in the reed. So the beauty of the goo is that you can sort of exploit new areas. A quick cast to the, um, to the far margin reeds, very close to where young Joe Morgan was fishing. <laughs> Poacher. And, <laughs> <laughs> and um, it ripped off, but it, you know, it's, it's probably been out, that rod's probably been out five minutes. Is that, mate, I reckon? Yeah. But you know what, though, mate? It doesn't half sort of fill you with confidence just getting a bend back in the rod because we've both been rusty and sort of, you know, more office bound than, uh, than bank bound. Whee, it's the We're big common. In the net. But it just shows, you know, you're moving that rig around, new spot, a few minutes, and it's away. Result. Well, there you go, a little bar of gold. Most definitely not the biggest carp I'm going to catch in 2012. But testimony to fishing tight to reed bed, so we're going to show you exactly how to do that right now. Right, Al, I think it's fair to say that there's a you know, good little technique for casting across the far margins. I obviously haven't got it because I put one straight in the reeds. You know, it couldn't be simpler, and I always say to people, try to edge your way up to the, the spot before you, you get clipped up. So we'll, we'll just go through the sort of process. I always try to get as close as I can, but not, not close enough to potentially stick one in them. <laughs> so just a little, we're just gonna flick it out there. Right, so that's a, that's a little way off, isn't it, yeah? yeah. So what, what I'd normally do is I'd try to guesstimate how far off we are. Check about 10 foot. Yeah, something like that. So what I'd do is I'd probably, probably walk back a bit, because I always try to cast a little bit further away, and then just pay off some line. Yeah, that's about from what I've worked out. So 
I'd probably try to put it under the clip, yeah? Right, and then wind it back in. Now, I try to, I always like to cast from a point um, a few feet away from the rod setup as well, because when you're fishing for smaller carp, what you don't want to keep doing is taking it out of the clip, redoing it. You know, the likelihood is I'm not going to hook the world record carp and it ain't going to strip me a few hundred yards down the lake. So um, by casting a little bit further away from the setup, um, I can leave it in the clip because I've got four or five turns on the reel before I put it on the buzzer, which is ideal. So I pick a, a casting spot. So let's have a go. Right. So I'm just bringing the rod to the side. That's all right, that Joey, isn't it? <laughs> Pretty close, isn't it, mate? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's about Good ideal. Guess. So within a couple of casts, we've got to, to within a foot. But to, to be honest, it might have taken us four casts to edge our way up, you know? It's only because we've been fishing and I've got a good feel for how far the spot is that I can do it in two casts. We know there's carp in there and that's the thing. That is what we look for this time of year, you know? You come into these lakes, there's a lot of barren water, but these carp are just sort of waking up again. You know they're gonna be in the reeds and I think, as always, the tighter you can go, the better. As my old mate Nick Elliott says, when there's nothing, something is everything. <laughs> and this is the biggest feature of the lake, so. Never a wiser word spoken. <laughs> That'll be it, boy. <laughs> yeah, it's a good bit of sport today. Really enjoyed it. A few bites, showed you a few uh, new bits that you haven't seen yet. It's just nice getting out for a few hours fishing, isn't it? I think a lot of people got this sort of mental block. If they go fishing, they've got to have everything at the kitchen sink and uh, you know they're out for for 24 hours or whatever but we've been out what three four hours yeah tub of, tub of stick mix couple of rods and away you go really you can put the brolly in the car if it starts raining go and get it <laughs> obviously i wouldn't go without the kettle but... <laughs> <laughs> done our fight hard in here in brookall <laughs> you're milking it in you is that no need for that joe again jealousy <laughs> i just swing it in now ah Oh, another. I don't want to scoop it, I wouldn't risk popping that hook out. Mid 40. <laughs> Brilliant. Lump. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's no other words for it, Joe. Exactly, mate. But you know what? We can all have a laugh about the size of them, but quality over quantity. <laughs> and uh, the yellow fingers say it all, don't they? I was going to say the fish hasn't got his winter colours, but you have. Yeah. Brilliant, mate. I have thoroughly enjoyed myself, and I hope. Um, the Carp TV viewers have uh, been given a few tips to apply to their own fishing. Top man, thanks oh, for that. Onwards and upwards. <laughs>